Sean Strickland versus Jack Marshman. We got minus 205 for Sean Strickland and plus 165 for Jack Marshman. Um, both guys are coming off a little bit of a layoff here. So we got Sean Strickland, who hasn't fought in roughly about two years. Uh, last time out, he uh, finished Nordin Taleb via second round uh, TKO. That was October of 2018. Um, Jack Marshman, on the other hand, his last fight was a loss to Edmund Shabazian, uh, and that was July of 2019. So both guys are coming. You know, that I'd say that's close to, uh, you know, just under... Uh, a year and a half that we saw Jack Marshman and then about two years since we had seen um, Sean Strickland. So I think the the whole narrative in terms of Sean Strickland coming off a huge layoff, um, it's a little bit of a wash. Again, coming here against uh, Jack Marshman, who himself has been off for a little while now too. Um, yeah, I don't think that's too much of a narrative to look into here. So I've been messaging a couple friends and talking about this matchup and saying, okay, you know, this is probably the last time that we're going to go out there and have the opportunity to fade John Phillips. And some of them, they get it kind of right off the bat. And then other ones are kind of just like, you know, he's fighting Jack Marshman, right? I'm like, of course, I know he's fighting Jack Marshman. And I know that they're different people, but uh, on on the surface, they kind of seem like the same guy uh, in terms of their fighting technique. And uh, when I did dig into it a little bit more, I, you know, I may have not given Jack Marshman enough uh, credit here because, yeah, he does have better footwork than John Phillips. Um, you know, he cuts angles a little bit better. Um, but again, from the surface, everything is pretty much the same in terms of the, the, the vast majority of their strikes and damages come from the hands. I actually looked into it in terms of um, how many, how often Jack Marshman attacks the legs. He lands about three leg kicks per fight. Uh, if you want to get more specific, he's landed 17 out of, I believe, 40 or 41 uh, attempted leg kicks uh, over his seven-fight UFC career. So that's just something to keep in mind there. Uh, it's not any, like really a point of emphasis for them. Uh, you know, it's more so just to look like they're staying active, uh, but more often than not, it's more so to just get his hands going uh, and, and try to close the range and land some bombs. Uh, both guys have the same type of, you know, style, like they just want to go out there and, and try to knock your head off, pretty much. Um, so in terms of Jack Marshman, I didn't really, I did not go back to the Magnus Seedemblad fight because that's just too far, uh, too far away. Not to mention also that, uh, you know, Seedon Blatt is just not UFC level whatsoever. Uh, the Ryan Janes fight, that's kind of one that I wanted to look at in terms of how Jack Marshman dealt with a guy that's going to have a, a, a bit of a range advantage, just as Sean Strickland will have here. You know, Strickland will have a three-inch reach advantage and also, I believe, a two- or three-inch height advantage as well, too. So that's something that Jack Marshman is going to have to overcome here. But in that fight, you know, he did have a little bit of success in closing the distance on Ryan Janes and landing some shots. And uh, the first round was obviously for Jack Marshman. The second one was really close. If you look at MMA decisions we only have 26 submitted scorecards there but it was only 53 percent for jack marshman 47 percent for ryan james and then in the last ones we obviously know that ryan james was able to take over land some big shots on jack marshman and he obviously took that round but all three judges still saw the first two rounds for jack marshman so he comes out on the winning end just by a hair Goes out there, loses to Antonio Carlos Jr., loses a decision to Carl Robertson, who decides to mix in the takedowns, get the fight to the ground, and kind of just lay on him from on top. John Phillips, again, kind of a mirror fight, but we saw what um, you know superior footwork looks like in, in, against a guy who just trudges forward and is always just winging shots and looking for like the big hook to land to knock him out. Uh, obviously, we saw Phillips go out there and, and drop Jack Marshman in that first round, and if he honestly followed up with it, uh, John Phillips, I'm sure, with the amount of uh, uh, strength and power he's able to generate, I wouldn't be surprised that he has some devastating ground and pound as well. But we just never see it because the the guy, whenever he's you know in a, a fight where the fight has hit the ground, he's the one with his back on the ground. So if he had actually followed up against um, uh, against Jack Marshman here, he probably would have gotten a TKO finish there from ground and pound, and he probably would have had two UFC wins on his record. However, 
he decides to play the showman, uh, you know, bows for some fucking reason, goes backwards and then waits for Marshman to get back to his feet and then claps his hand. Like that stuff fury just makes me pissed. I'm not sure. Like it's more so like John Phillips is clearly showing that he's there to just be the tough guy, uh, please the crowd a little bit too much, you know, to the point of just damaging his career. And then, uh, yeah, now we've more than likely he'll be seeing uh, or watching the UFC from the outside looking in. So uh, poor John Phillips. But Jack Marshman, again, a little bit more well-rounded in terms of being able to mix in footwork with the power punching. So that's what he has up on John Phillips. And in that fight against Phillips, Phillips was the one moving forward the entire time. And Jack Marshman was kind of just piecing him up with a nice jab, moving backwards, landing the more strikes. Some people had that fight for John Phillips just due to the forward movement. I didn't understand that. You know, Jack Marshman was definitely getting off the better shots and more consistent shots as well. Uh, and then obviously we saw him go out there and just get absolutely dusted by Edmund Shabazzian, who was able to get that fight down pretty early and then pulled off uh, a rear naked choke. So uh, in this fight against Sean Strickland, yeah, he has a range uh, disadvantage to deal with here. He's going to have to cut that range uh, and try to land on Sean Strickland early or just often. But I think he's going to have a lot of trouble doing so. You know, I think Sean Strickland is just much better all around. Uh, the kid's 20 and 3 at this point. Um, he has come off a little bit of a layoff. Uh, his last loss was to Elizio Zaleski Dos Santos, where uh, Dos Santos just landed a beautiful spinning uh, wheel kick. Um, and it's a shot that Strickland clearly didn't see coming. Like, yeah, he put his hand up to kind of block it, but he thought he did enough to block it. But Zaleski's range on that wheel kick was just insane, where it still managed to hit Strickland on the back of the head, just beyond the ear, rattled him. And then obviously we saw Zaleski follow up with shots and then put him out that way. But the difference here with Jack Marston is I think that Sean Strickland is going to see everything that's coming his way. Uh, and I think that's going to be the difference here. Like, we know most of uh, Phillips's or Marshman's uh, strike here is from his hands like they're gonna come down the middle he's gonna see all of them uh it's it's not like anything strickland hasn't really gone up against in the past you know when you're talking about guys that just have that one path to victory of just using their hands not really using much else to set up uh you know their shots or you know again i'll give him credit for being able to cut angles a little bit but again it's a little bit amateurish compared to what strong sean strickland's have to face in the past you know, he, he went out there and outstruck Tom Breeze, who, in my opinion, is when he's on, he's probably one of the best strikers in the game. And, uh, yeah, Sean Strickland did a good job of just, you know, one-twos down the middle, solid leg kicks as well, too. Uh, that's something that's going to be important for Strickland here to maintain the distance. Uh, but I think he looks great, you know, just going through his IG as well. You know, he's he's over there in Vegas. Uh, he's worked a little bit with Johnny Walker, which is good. Um, he's worked with um, Michelle Pereira, which is a, a good one, too. Um, but, like, you know, working with John Wood, uh, some of those syndicate guys as well, too, that's very, very important for Sean Strickland here to get in that type of work. And he looks in great shape. He looks in phenomenal shape. So I think he's, uh, he's really taken this comeback seriously. Um, but yeah, this is a kind of a cupcake for him to, to, to get back into the UFC, get his feet wet and start to just really get his game going. Uh, yeah, again, I kind of lump Marshman and, uh, Phillips into the same realm. So I think they're highly fadeable. And when you have a, a technician on the feet like Strickland, I think it's kind of an easy fight for him to just go out there and kind of make it look like a sparring match where he just goes out there and just kind of completely dust Mar Marshman. Obviously, he's going to have to look out for the overhand right of Jack Marshman. He doesn't really need to worry about too much else. There's no takedowns that he needs to worry about. Jack Marshman hasn't even attempted a takedown in his UFC career. His takedown defense is 20%. So that's something that, that Sean Strickland could definitely take advantage of as well in case he doesn't feel too confident on the feet after getting clipped once or twice or anything like that. I think Strickland could definitely land some takedowns here uh, and, and kind of just ride out on top if he needs to possibly pull off a submission too he has four submission victories on his record obviously not you know that's just less than 25 percent of the of his wins but uh yeah i just think strickland is better everywhere and i'm kind of surprised that you know he opened at minus 260 and the line has come down now he's roughly around the minus 200 range which is kind of mind-blowing so uh it hasn't opened up in any of the bookies that i'm on right now uh so i'm looking forward to seeing you know once the limits are open and once they're on my websites what line he's at but uh you know, I truly thought uh, Strickland would be up to minus 300 here. Um, 
you know, I think a lot of people are going to bang on him for his possible durability issues. But again, getting finished by Zaleski the way that he did, there's no way Marshman's going to be able to do that. And obviously, there's a little bit of concern in terms of Strickland kind of almost having the tall man defense where his chin is a little bit high. But again, he does so well in terms of with his head movement and getting out of uh, the way of big shots uh, that I think he'll be able to see anything that Marshman throws his way. And again, Marshman's not that quick of a, of a fighter either. So that's something to, to keep in mind that Strickland will probably be able to telegraph and see everything that's coming his way and able to get out of the way as well too. So I love Strickland in this spot. I think he's a solid, solid play for this card. Uh, but yeah, I do definitely like Sean Strickland to win this fight and I'll say to win by decision uh Marshman is quite durable quite tough unless we see this fight hit the ground I could see Strickland going out there and getting a submission of a sort as well so uh but I'll go the safer I'll go with uh Sean Strickland to win this fight via decision